In this tutorial, we're going to look at styles. Now, if you're not using styles, and that is object styles, paragraph styles, and character styles, in my opinion, you are not using InDesign because it's the, the fact that you have styles that makes working with large documents in InDesign what it is. So, in order to look at styles, it's important that we create objects with different styles. So, I'm going to just create a, a couple more text frames and one text frame I'll give a blue background to and I'm going to adjust the text frame options so that I have everything on the top. Another one I may give a red background to um, or maybe a green one. It doesn't really matter but I'm going to adjust my text frame options so that I am using bottom instead. So Obviously, you can tell that these frames are different. Now, I can do other things about these frames as well. I can also change things like the stroke, which I don't have on many of these, but I'm going to add some stroke to this object just so it's very obvious. And, of course, it's pretty ugly right now, but we're not really talking about design issues. We're just talking about how InDesign works. So you can tell that I have three very distinct objects. In order to save these objects as presets and use them later on, I want to go to my object styles. Now, I'm going to expand this just a little bit. And you'll notice right now I have none, basic graphics frame, and basic text frame. And right now it has a little plus next to it, which means that this is a basic text frame that's been modified. In order to create a new style, I have a couple different ways. I think I can just click and drag this over to the panel. Uh, it's not going to let me do that. I guess I'm going to just have to click on New. So I'm going to click on Create New Style, and you'll see it created Object Style 1. So I'm going to double click and just say White Frame Justified. I'm going to click on this one and add a new one and double click on the name. And oops, I didn't mean to double click on it. Just click on the name and change that to green with, what is that, magenta with uh, outline, and this one will be my blue. Now, I think that we can actually click on the menu and do new object style, which will come up with the ability for me to create something and give it a name at the same time. But you'll see there's a lot of other settings here to be aware of. Um, we aren't going to talk about those yet, but I'm going to show you why you use object styles. Because I've got these object styles set up, anytime that I want to reuse them, I can just click on another, another object and change the style however I want. This means that I can use a style over and over within a document very easy very easily. If I want to change a style, it's pretty easy. There are two ways to do it. One way to do it is to make manual changes to an object. I'm going to go to my swatches and change the color so that I have red as my stroke and my background will now be blue. And you'll see that I have actually changed the object style so it now says green with outline has a plus next to it. So here's one of the problems with the way that I named things. I named it according to the way it looks, not its function. So it's no longer green with an outline, it's blue with an outline. So this name wouldn't really apply. That's just something to be aware of when creating object styles, or any styles, is that you really want them to be called by what their function is, not by how they look. Um, but going on, if I want to update this style, I can right-click and choose Redefine Style, and any other object that uses the exact same style will automatically be altered. That is extremely powerful. It means that anytime you alter this style, every single object that uses that style will also be altered. Now, if I don't have an object selected, I can also double-click on a style, or click on it, let me click outside, if you double click on the name, um, it depends. Sometimes it might select the name, sometimes it will get you into this box where I'm actually editing this style. So I'm going to call this 
instead of green, I'll call it call out with outline. Um, it's going to be based upon the text frame. So there are ways that you can have cascading styles, basically. And, and if you're familiar with cascading style sheets, it's what's going on there. But look at some of the other effects that I can add. I can add a drop shadow. If I click on the preview, then it will actually hopefully show me this. I'm going to click on drop shadow and see what's going on here. Here are my drop shadow options. I can also do an inner shadow. So if I click on that, let's um, let's see, change our size. So it's pretty big. Um, we can do bevel and emboss, inner glow, outer glow. And you'll notice some of these come from Photoshop. I'm going to go to drop shadow and change the offset because I don't really want any offset. I want it to be right in the center. So take a look at that. So now we've created with that style, we've given it an object style with um, effects and all sorts of stuff. So it's pretty powerful of what you can do with objects. Now with object styles, you have this other dialog box next to it called effects. And this effects also deals with some of these types of things. This is a basically a more advanced way of looking at your object styles because you can do things like blending modes, multiply, overlay, soft light, hard light, but you can also do strokes that are done with different opacities or fills that are done with different opacities or text that's done with different opacity or even a blending mode on that text. It's pretty wild what you can do. So you need to be aware that there's lots of options within this text frame for how it can be used. Now notice that that like I said, the, the fill has been given an opacity, which is, which is different than um, the stroke opacity. Now, if I go back to my object styles, you'll see that it has changed that style. And of course, I can now re um, right-click on that style and choose Redefine Style. And every object that uses that style will also be defined um, that same way. So the effects and object styles can work together, and that's why they're next to each other typically, to do some really neat things. Now with effects, you'll notice that um, these effects also appear with um, the inner glow, outer glow, transparency, and all that kind of stuff. And I'm sure it's, possibly, um, it's possible to find object styles that are libraries. So if I go to my, um, let's see, load object styles, we can probably find object styles that we can download from somewhere else that give us some of these settings, the effects and everything else, so that we can find some really fancy object styles out there. Now one other thing about text uh, the frame that I totally forgot to mention is if I go to the object, I can also go to things like effects here and see many of the same things, but also corner op options, which is kind of fun. And with corner options, I have the ability to do fancy corners or beveled corners or rounded corners, which of course is very Web 2.0-ish. Click OK. You'll notice it's changed that for the setting. I can right click, choose redefine style so that all the other objects have rounded corners as well. So there are other things to look into in here as well with the object. There may be a couple different things that are, are kind of cool just to be aware of. Um, you can convert that shape to different types of objects. Of course, this type of thing will only be changing that object itself, not the preset. So just be aware that changing the object shape, converting that shape, will not be changing necessarily the setting, except this is a rectangle, that's a rectangle, so that's why it's here showing. Now, one last thing that you might get into with object styles, and, and you'll see this with paragraph and character styles here in a minute, is that it won't allow me to, to click on that style and go back to normal. So you might have to click it onto a different style and then take it back to the original style to make it work. Or if I get back to this, if you alt click on a style when you've modified that object somehow, um, it will say 
force it to go back to that style. So that's alt clicking on a style when it has a plus and it doesn't seem to allow you to change things. And that's because I've made